Mr. Kevin Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. That's very kind. All right, let's have a look at you. Bunch of mutants. Yeah. Not you, that's, that's what I want to talk to you about, a bunch of mutants. The X-Men, everyone's, uh, well not everyone's, but it's certainly geneticist's favorite superhero. So the X-Men have been around for a long time, you probably know. They were created by Stan Lee in 1963 for Marvel Comics. And Lee had already done the Fantastic Four, he'd done the Hulk, he'd done Spider-Man. And he wanted to have a team of superheroes with lots of different powers. So, but he had a problem, which is he didn't want to have to come up with different origin stories for all of them. He couldn't have everybody you know, irradiated by gamma rays or cosmic rays or bitten by a radioactive spider. He just run out of cool animals to have bite people, basically. Kind of you know, mosquito man or bed bug man. It's just not awesome at all. So. Or Jack Russell man. It's just not, it's not the same. So, so he took what he called the cowardly way. He just decided he'd make them all mutants and then he could have whatever powers they want. So they could have laser beams coming out of their eyeballs or control the weather or turn into ice and all of that he could put down to mutation. Now, as a geneticist, I have to say some of those uh, powers are not the most biologically plausible effects of mutation. So <laughs> there are a few animals that can manage a kind of a dim glow you know, in the deep, murky depths of the ocean, maybe, that you can see in the dark. But laser beams out of your eyeballs is just a bit absurd. And, you know, you can't just cancel the laws of physics. You still have to have power from somewhere. It's ridiculous. I mean, how do you even see? It's... But, uh, but some of the other ones are not completely far-fetched. So let's see, some of the other mutants. All right, anybody, give me another mutant. Wolverine. There you are. The chicks love Wolverine because he's a badass. <laughs> He's not a boring little goody two-shoes like Scott. <laughs> Stupid laser beam eyeballs. <laughs> Wolverine. So Wolverine's power is, is super healing That's and, re and regeneration, which actually is not that far-fetched. So there are actually mutations, in, in mice at least, that can cause super healing. They're called super healing mice. And they uh, heal wounds faster without scarring. They can regenerate uh, even broken bones, they can even regrow digits if you accidentally chop a few of them off uh, by accident. Um, so, so that one's not that bizarre. All right, who else? Gambit. Ga please, Gambit. <laughs> Punk. Stupid flipping cards at people. It's a dick move. All right, a real, give me a real mutant. Come on. Say it again. Didn't hear it? Panther? He's an Avenger. Black Panther? Yeah. Come on. He's <laughs> not, a, he's not a re, an X-Man. Who? Say it again. Ro. Ro please. Let's get me started on that succubus. <laughs> oh, she's dead to me. All right, come on, somebody else. How about Beast? Beast is good. So Beast is another one which is somewhat realistic. So super strong, that's a real thing. There are mutations that make uh, animals or people super strong. They actually basically double... Uh, the muscle growth, super hairy, that unfortunately is a real thing. Uh, it's a condition called hypertrichosis, which means super hairy. Uh, it's <laughs> also called werewolf syndrome, rather unsympathetically. Um, <laughs> well, she's blue, uh, which actually is a real thing. So there is a mutation that can make you blue. There's a, a family in the, the Appalachian Mountains in Kentucky called the Blue People of Troublesome Creek who have a condition called methemoglobinemia, which uh, basically makes their blood blue and their skin blue, really, really blue. No teleporters as far as I know, but you never be too sure with people from Kentucky. <laughs> um, all right, anyone else? Let's see. Professor X. Magneto, Magneto. So Magneto, yeah, control magnetism. Now again, there's a little grain of truth there maybe. So some animals can, can emit a very weak electromagnetic field um, like platypuses, actually, duck-billed platypuses out of their bill emit an electromagnetic field and then they use that to detect their prey. But I mean, they're, not, they're not lifting aircraft carriers, though. Um, although I have to say, if you're going to be, you know, if you want to have a character who, who has those powers, it's probably better to say he's a mutant than to have him being bitten by a radioactive platypus. So that's something. <laughs> All right, Professor X. Professor X is a good one. So he's a telepath. Uh, he can read minds. He can manipulate people. And again, that is a real thing. There is a genetically distinct group of people 
who are much better at reading minds than the rest of the population. They're called women. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> I'm not making that up, that's a real thing. Um, now, whether they're better at manipulating people, at, well, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm out of range of my wife, so I can say yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, but so, so, so there are some maybe uh, that, are, that are somewhat realistic, a little far-fetched, and others are completely nuts. But the other thing about the, the X-Men is that all of those uh, different mutant abilities are supposed to come from mutations in the same gene, the X gene. So the ones I was talking about are all mutations in different genes that give those different things. So how could that possibly happen, that mutations in the same gene could give rise to all these different abilities? Well, so despite clearly not knowing anything really about genetics, actually Lee stumbled upon a mechanism that really exists. So there really is a gene that when you mutate it gives rise to lots of different phenotypes in different individuals. It's a gene called HSP90, which stands for heat shock protein 90. And heat shock proteins are turned on in cells when they get stressed. So if you rapidly elevate the temperature, for example, these proteins are turned on and their job in the cell is to protect it from that stress and what they have to do is help other proteins fold into the right shape. So in each of our cells we have about 20,000 proteins and they're all encoded by a different gene. And what they're made up of is a string of amino acids, there's 20 different kinds of amino acids that can be assembled in a different order depending on the sequence of the DNA that codes for that protein. So what happens as they're being made is they don't stay like a string. All the atoms in all the amino acids of that protein are exerting forces on each other, physical forces. So they fold up into a really complex shape, it's kind of a molecular origami. And that shape is crucial for each of those proteins to do its job. So what happens when you raise the temperature is that those forces are distorted, the folding of the protein is disrupted. So HSP90, its job has come along and actually fairly literally grab a hold of those proteins and shake them until they fold themselves back up into the right shape. So it protects the cells from uh, stresses. And the other job it does is actually protect the cells from mutations. So if, a, if a, a, a gene gets a mutation in it, so it changes the DNA, then it changes the instructions for which amino acid to put into the protein, then what can happen is the protein folds wrong. Now HSP90 can grab it, slap it around a little bit, tell it to pull itself together basically and help it to fold. So that's great because it means that HSP90 is there in all your cells protecting them from mutations. But there's a dark side to that, which is that because it's there, it allows mutations to accumulate in the species. Because it's there buffering them, they don't have any effect. Now, maybe you see where I'm going with this. What happens if HSP90 gene is mutated? Then all that genetic variation can be released so that it can have uh, effects on the, on, the, on the organisms. And you can get a whole range of different things happen when just that gene is mutated. So that's exactly what happened when it was mutated in, in fruit flies, which is where it was found first. They ended up with flies with, with no eyes, with um, misshapen wings, with duplicated body parts, all kinds of freaky shit. And in fact, so, so all due to mutations in that one gene. And actually the other thing was when you put the flies then in stressful conditions, it made it even freakier. So we got all sorts of weird stuff happening. Which again ties back to the X-Men because the idea in the X-Men is that the um, people have their powers or their abilities are latent for most of their life until they hit some kind of stressful situation. And actually most of the time the stress is that they're teenagers because being a teenager is like, oh my God, so stressful. <laughs> so, um, so, so despite the fact that Lee wasn't a, a geneticist and that this mechanism wasn't even known at the time, he actually hit upon a real uh, biological mechanism that is really crucial actually for evolution of species as they go into, into different environments. Still doesn't get you laser beams coming out of your eyeballs though. <laughs> Thank you.